This video defines the standard inverse trig functions, sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tan inverse. In this crazy looking graph, please focus first on the thin black line. This is a graph of y equals sine x. The graph of the inverse of a function can be found by flipping the graph of the original function over the line y equals x. I've drawn the flipped graph with this blue dotted line. But you'll notice that the blue dotted line is not the graph of a function because it violates the vertical line test. So in order to get a function that's the inverse of y equals sine x, we need to restrict the domain of sine of x. We'll restrict it to this piece that's drawn with a thick black line. If I invert that piece by flipping it over the line y equals x, I get the piece drawn with a red dotted line here. And that piece does satisfy the vertical line test, so it is in fact a function. Although regular sine x has domain from negative infinity to infinity, our restricted sine x has domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Its, its range is still from negative 1 to 1, just like the regular sine x, because I've taken the biggest possible piece of the graph whose flipped version is still a function. The inverse sine function is often written as arc sine of x. And since inverting a function reverses the roles of y and x, it reverses the domain and the range. So arc sine of x, the inverse function, has domain from negative 1 to 1 and range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which seems plausible from the graph. Now an inverse function undoes the work of a function. So if the function sine takes angles theta to numbers x, then the inverse sine, or arc sine, takes numbers x to angles theta. For example, since sine of pi over 2 is 1, arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. And in general, the output of arc sine of x is the angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, whose sine is x. y is equal to arc sine x means that x is equal to sine of y. But since there are many angles y whose sine is x, right, they all differ by multiples of 2 pi, we specify also that y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That was the whole point of doing this domain restriction in order to get a well-defined inverse value. There's an alternate notation for inverse sine. Sometimes it's written as sine to the negative 1 of x. But this notation can be confusing, so be careful. In particular, sine to the negative 1 of x does not equal 1 over sine of x. 1 over sine of x, the reciprocal function, is another word for cosecant of x. But sine to the negative 1 of x is another word for arc sine of x, the inverse sine function, which is not the same thing as the reciprocal function. Let's go through the same process to build an inverse cosine function. We start with a graph of cosine of x. We flip it over the line y equals x to get the blue dotted line. But the blue dotted line is not a function, so we go back and restrict the domain for our original cosine of x to just be between 0 and pi. The resulting red graph now satisfies the vertical line test, so it's a proper inverse function. Our restricted cosine has domain from 0 to pi and range from negative 1 to 1. And so our inverse function, arc cosine, has domain from negative 1 to 1 and range from 0 to pi. Since cosine takes us from angles to numbers, arc cosine takes us from numbers back to angles. For example, cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, so arc cosine of the square root of 2 over 2 
is equal to pi over 4. Arc cosine of x is the angle between 0 and pi whose cosine is x. In other words, y equals arc cosine of x means that x is equal to cosine of y and y is between 0 and pi since otherwise there'd be lots of possible answers for an angle y whose cosine is x. The alternative notation for arc cosine is cosine inverse. And again, we have to be careful. Cosine to the negative 1x is not the same thing as 1 over cosine of x. 1 over cosine of x is also called secant of x. Cosine to the negative 1x means arc cosine, the inverse function, and these two things are not the same. Finally, let's look, take a look at inverse tangent function. Here's a graph of tangent in black. These vertical lines aren't really part of the function, they're just vertical asymptotes. So in order to get an actual function, when we flip over the line y equals x, we take just one piece of the tangent function. Here we've taken the piece marked in black. When we flip that over the line y equals x, we get this piece in red, which is actually a function because it satisfies the vertical line test. Now you might ask, would it be possible to pick a different piece of the tangent function to invert? And the answer is yes, we could do that. And on another planet, maybe mathematicians do that. But on our planet, we use the convention that we pick this piece of tangent to invert, which is kind of a convenient choice since it's centered here around the origin. In the previous two examples, our choice of restricted domain for sine and for cosine was also a convention that led to a conveniently defined inverse function. In any case, based on our choice, our restricted tan function has domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We don't include the endpoints in that interval because our restricted tan function has vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so it's not defined there. The range of our restricted tan function is from negative infinity to infinity. Therefore, arctan of x has domain from negative infinity to infinity and range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Once again, tangent is taking us from angles to numbers, so arctan is taking us from numbers to angles. For example, tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and therefore arctan of 1 is pi over 4. So arctan of x means the angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 whose tangent is x. y is equal to arctan x means that x is equal to tangent of y and that y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. The inverse tan function can also be written as tan to the minus 1 of x. And once again, tan inverse of x means the inverse trig function, arc tan of x, and it's not equal to 1 over tan of x, which is called cotangent of x. And that's all for this video on the three basic inverse trig functions. Sine inverse x, also known as arc sine of x, cosine inverse x, also known as arc cosine x, and tan inverse x, also known as arc tan x.